Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. And today, not just a regular edition of StarCraft Remastered, it's going to be a best of five featuring Flash and Rain. Sent to me by RJB. Game number one is going to be here on Neo Sylphid. Left side is going to be Rain, our Red Protoss player, and the right side it is Flash. So, it's going to be a TVP best of five. I'm gonna see a lot of tanks and dragoons and vultures and spider mines and arbiters and maybe some carriers if we get lucky for carrier lovers and let's go ahead and see how game one is gonna turn out here hit that like button if you're excited for a best of five featuring flash and rain all right so no cannon rushing here from rain and otherwise there would be a probe out already on this three-player map no proxies as well so we're just gonna play this standard at least for the first couple of minutes we could proxy a starport or proxy a stargates but not right now because you can't make them right right not until your gateway and cybernetic score are done anyway and barracks and factory Anyway, Steve the SCV throwing down a barracks at the front of his natural base. Okay. Gateway coming up inside the main base here of rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That could indicate that we're going to see a one base play here from rain, but uh, I don't know. I'm not sure that's very likely. Yeah, Cybercore. SCV is scouting the wrong direction, but that's okay. This is a three-player map, so he will find the Protoss player on his next stop. It's okay, Steve. We all guess wrong sometimes, right? Right, okay. It's a PBT. All right, so no gas, one racks opening, bunker, To defend against Dragoons. Mm, supply Depot. Singularity Charge. On the way here. And gas on the way here. Okay, so. Getting an early expand. Protecting it with a bunker. And then trying to get out a factory to defend against the Dragoons. That will surely show up. Steve says. Oh boy. Here we go. Dragoons on the way. Hurry. Bunker. There we go. Bunker in it. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Hope you're excited to click on a best of five featuring Flash and Rain. Very excited to see what Rain does here. Honestly, he is a top tier Protoss, but I don't have on my list of like top, top, top tier Protoss, right? Like Snow has been recently. But I'm curious to see. Curious to see what he can do here against Flash. He's going to have to deal with, again, just some amazing play out of Flash. He's insanely, insanely still on top of his game. I'm not quite sure how old these games are, to be honest with you. But it's going to be Flash. And honestly, I haven't cast a game of Flash. It's even a recent one where I've been disappointed with him. So, yeah. Dragoon maybe thinks about running by. There's only one Marine in that bunker. Honestly, the problem with running by here is the Sim City is such. You probably just get surrounded by SCVs and killed. So that's why we would hang out. There we go. Second base on the way from the Protoss. Recognizing, ah, oh, the Terran's already running on two bases. Crap. Need a third. Really need a third. Let's check to make sure it's safe to get a third. Maybe maybe we do it here. Do we want to wall off against potential vultures first? I mean, factory's not done yet. Second factory getting started up now. And a robo. Everything is pretty star darn standard here. Right? Nothing too weird whatsoever. Dragoon's going to fire on this bunker. One SCV to repair the bunker per Dragoon's firing upon it. And yeah, it looks like he wants a third base here. It is... I mean, this narrow ramp, you can wall it off easily against Vulture Harass, which is what you want to do against a good Terran player. The Vultures are going to be a problem. If he goes for a quick fourth base here, though, what's he scouting for? Is he, like, looking for a ninja third base of Flashes? That'd be interesting. Pull another SCV. It's time. And here he comes. Third SCV on the repair. There we go. 
Yeah, I guess maybe this probe is just checking to see if there's any sign of a third base or anything, but nah. Observatory coming in because spider mines are a concern, and in fact, the first upgrade of the day for Flash is going to be... Well, he's getting a tank, so probably Siege Mode. Although we have seen tank produced... Ooh, Double Machine Shop says this could be Siege Mode and Spider Mines. Or Vulture Speed and Spider Mines. Or nothing. He doesn't have enough money to do it. Ooh, he's just making tanks. Unseageable tanks are what we're prioritizing right now. Pop. Pop. Ooh, two hits. Okay, two hits is what you can take without taking whole damage. So, oh boy. Are you repairing still? Yeah, still repairing. Flash is too good. He's not going to stop repairing. Even though they will once it's at full HP and won't automatically start re-repairing if it takes more damage, because SCVs are done that way. Uh, there we go. Spider Mines and Vulture Speed. All right. Oh, tank down. Beautifully executed. Did not lose a Dragoon in the process, but as we always say, it's okay to lose Dragoons in the process of killing tanks in the early stages. Oh. Rain is third basing over here. No gas. Why is this pylon here then? For future purposes, I guess. And that's what my assumption is going to be. These tanks are like, bring it. Fight me, you cowards. And, ooh. Actually, does he, want, he wants that other. He gets it. He sends the tank count back to zero. Kills a vulture too. Oh my gosh, the army value is now four marines for Flash, and here's that citizen's arrest. SCV is getting in there being like, ah, how dare you. You know what? Great trades. You reset that tank count back to zero. You reset that vulture count back to zero. Feeling good about yourself. Actually, there are two vultures over here, and they're going to get a probe kill because there's nothing defending this third base at all. Seriously, though, get a forge. Start making cannons at your bases. It's only two vultures, but it's better than nothing. Mikey. All right. Well, rebuild the tank count. Here we go. Tank one, tank two. This is a very popular map for drops. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a reaver drop attempted here, but I don't know. Support bay could come up at any moment. All right, third base lives. Pylon almost got killed by a Vultures, which would be embarrassing. Beautiful obs placement here by Rain 2 being like, yo, let me see what comes out of these factories. I mean, it's going to be tanks and Vultures. Were you surprised by any of that? No. Finally, Siege Mode comes in. The priorities were Vulture Speed and Spider Mines because, you know, you can be really annoying with fast Vultures and Spider Mines as an elite Terran player. Or even not elite, right? I mean, sometimes we do see players who are insanely good with vultures, and they're not necessarily, you know, S rank on the ladder right now. They're just regular old B, C rank, but they've really prioritized working on their vulture micro, working on their spider mine laying. They could be very, very dangerous in this matchup, like we've seen from 4 Phoenix. If you watch the 4 Phoenix game uh, that I posted last, earlier this week, I think it was earlier this week. Ooh, it is a support bay. Yeah, I'm pretty impressive stuff out of Four Phoenix. He's a Taiwanese viewer and a member of the channel, as well as being a patron. So he's a pretty cool dude. We like him, and he's a great Starcraft player too. So good on him. Third base gonna land for Flash. It's probably gonna be a fourth base out of this probe here. Once again, we trade, right? Rain is doing the best job of trading Dragoons for Siege tanks that I've seen in a PVT in a while. A lot of the PVTs I've been casting, the Protoss is like, nah, I don't really feel like going in there and killing tanks. My Dragoons will die. And then 30 tanks show up and they plant right here. And then it's like surprise Pikachu face for the Protoss. They're like, wait, what? I didn't know this would happen. Oh, yes, you did. And you didn't do any work to kill tanks in the first 10 minutes of the game. So, Flash is protecting his tanks with Vultures, with Spider Mines, jumping in here. I feel like he could kill a couple tanks with this, but maybe just one, and maybe that's not worth it. Yeah, Reavers are on the way. I mean, this is the whole purpose of this floating engineering bay, of these turrets. He knows, he knows that dealing with a Reaver Drop is something he's probably going to have to do today. Working on a starport, wouldn't be surprised to see a Wraith out to try to deny that shuttle that it does exist. He doesn't know it exists. He might have scanned it. May have scanned it, but also maybe not. 
shuttle speed coming in. Finally working on a plus one attack and a Citadel of Adun is rain. Science facility on the way for those EMPs and really not much of anything else from the Terran perspective in this matchup, you know? So at this stage, 128 to 110 supply. Uh, four bases warping in now. Fifth base coming in from rain. Love and that. And I think Flash has had the idea. Yeah, this is what these turrets are for. He's been thinking about the potential of reaver drops and storm drops on this map since he spawned onto this map. So not really getting in there, are ya? There's a scan. I mean, he sees the Robo Bay. He's probably scanned this already. Ooh, he knows about this too. And yeah, Dragoons are going to come up to protect that because he knows it is vulnerable. It has nothing defending it at all. This is at least hard walled and this is pretty walled off too with the cannon on support. So nice setup there by Rain. Protoss players, take notes on how to defend this base against Vulture stuff. Rain's showing us this base too, right? And if you're Flash, you got your three bases. Nope. Right? You got your third gas. You got your tanks. You got your plus one attack. You're working on plus two attack and plus one vehicle plating. This is all stuff that they've done a billion times. Templar Archives on the way. Could be for Arbiters. Arbiters are a little bit better at taking shots from missile turrets and going for a recall. Could be for a storm as well. Yeah, I'm trying to come over here. I don't know about this. Uh, he just, he's trading out, man. He wants a tank. He gets a tank. He backs out. He lost a couple of Dragoons. Fine. Fine. We'll take it. And then he Zealot Bombs on this tank line that is actually unsupported by any Vultures at all. Vultures do come in pretty darn quickly, but get chopped in the face by Zealots. Vultures dying to Zealots is never good. And then Dragoons on the follow-up, wiping out more and more tanks. Are Dragoons dying here? Yes. But that's okay. Wiping out like five tanks here was beautiful. Trying to mess with this fourth base attempt to flash down here at the six o'clock is also very good not going to really be able to do anything to it other than poke it a bit. Uh, you know, trading out some vultures for free basically is good, but then the tanks show up and, well. This vulture really wants to die. That vulture could have gotten out of there. Instead, wandered in and died. It is Storm on the way. It is not a Stargate and an Arbiter Tribunal quite yet, but we'll try to keep an eye on that one. I, this is good stuff out of rain, though. This is one of the better PBTs I've seen anybody play against Flash. Yeah, man, both players' APMs hovering over 300 here at the 12-minute mark. Anyone can spam fast APM at the start of the game, but your APM's over 300 at the 13-minute mark. You're doing pretty well for yourself. You're probably playing pretty fast. Yeah, just further upgrades all over the place here. Forge, second forge on the way from rain. Knows the utter importance of having a million bases against Flash because he's going to be so cost efficient against you. You just need more money than he does, but this fourth base of Flash is a big deal. I mean, all right, here we go. Coming in here again to trade out. Sell it, bombing beautifully. Getting on top of a couple of those tanks. Another tank is going to die. Zealot's Dragoons working together as they are meant to do. And several more tanks go down. This is probably it for tank death. So, yeah, kite back. Kill the vultures that chase you. Maybe send your Zealots in to kill some of these vultures, too. Why not? Ooh, reinforcing Dragoons show up. I think you can... Oh, good storm. Bruising up those tanks. Taking two of them out. Rain. Doing some serious work here. Another tank dies. Is he losing Dragoons? Yes. Is that the whole point of this entire excursion? Yes. <laughs> Poor Archon never came in, but that's a sixth base warping in from rain here. Okay. 163 to 130 supply. 77 to 70 workers. Rain's got an advantage in both of those numbers, and he's going to need it. Okay, this time, double shuttle heading down. Maybe trying to drop this base? Uh, oh my gosh, the turret count, though. He manages to get one zealot unloaded. Probably take down a missile turret. Maybe two? I don't know. He gets it before he gets killed by vultures. Nice. Siege tanks are pushing, though. This is where it gets 
really scary. This is where it gets terrifying for Protoss players. Flash is pushing me. Does he have 30 tanks? Actually, no. Because I've done a good job keeping that tank count low over the course of the game. It is not 30 siege tanks. It's like 10. Which is substantially lower and more willing. Reign's more willing to engage with this number of tanks. Zealot bombs have been really good today, too. Just gorgeous. Storm bruising up tank on the rope. Oh, takes the tank down on the right side. Good storm there. My gosh, another tank dies. And Rain just kind of stops this push right in its tracks. There are reinforcing tanks coming in. But, I mean, two unsaved siege tanks joining this party. I guess there aren't a lot of Protoss units left. High Templar's got one kill, but bruised up some of this mech. Archon shows up. Ooh, Science Vessel dies. That's always huge. Archon gets wiped out. This group of Protoss dies. But guess who can make... Five Dragoons and seven Zealots at a time. Rain can, because he has the infrastructure. Because he has the base count. I mean, there's not really anything going on at this 12 o'clock spawn for him, but still. Spider Mine Dragoon. That's such good value out of that Spider Mine. Insanely good value. Shuttles. Considering going in for another kind of an attack here. Probes. Transferring up to that 12 o'clock spot that doesn't have any workers at it right now, so that makes a lot of sense. But they get intercepted by the vultures. Yeah, you can't send your probes unescorted across the map like that. Not when you're playing against Flash. These dragoons are gonna die. They're oh, they're just gonna be ignored. That's even worse. No! Reinforcing dragoons say, get on out of here. Get on out, Flash. Expanding towards the ter the Protoss, rather, as the Terran. All right, this is pretty, man, this is a pretty good game number one of this best of five. I can see why RJB reminded me that he sent it in the request. Like, like seriously, though, this best of five. All right, neat. Storm not, didn't really kill much, but, oh, there we go. Another storm going to kill much there, but still not everything. And so this base does get to live. Got plus two attack upgrades on the Protoss. Flash is at the traditional 2-1. Zealot just wants a tank before he dies. He gets it. Ooh, and a storm on the SCVs that wandered into an active war zone. Mm, that's a war crime, but I'm not sure there are Geneva Conventions available in the Caprulu sector for the StarCraft universe. 200 to 150 supply. I'm not sure Rain could be in a better position than he is right now at the 17-minute mark versus Flash. I mean, he could have won by now, but it's a tall order against someone as good as the greatest StarCraft player of all time. He's going for it. He's going to eat some of these spider mines with Zealot. Ooh, detour them into this fifth base of flashes. Leave the rest of the Protoss army to go to town. All right. Yeah, Vultures are dispatched to deal with the Zealots, but that kind of leaves these tanks unsupported. My gosh, these Dragoons with the plus two attack and plus one armor, mind you. That's finished up tier two. But the mech's at three, two, so it's as powerful as it's ever going to be. It's not going to get less powerful from here. I mean, this, ex this expanding is glorious. It is glorious. For both these players, honestly, for a Terran player to manage to get up to five bases is awesome. For a Protoss to be at one, two, three, four, five, six, a seventh base is warping in. Sub 20 minutes is awesome for him, too. But. I talk about this a lot, but there is an incredible light versus flash PVT where light is playing Protoss. Where he just expands like an absolute madman. And it works, by golly. It does very well, so I just don't know why you wouldn't do that as a Protoss. I guess you're scared of getting punished. Ooh, forcing a liftoff on this third base is pretty good. I thought there's a lot of resources left here. All the gas has been depleted. Flash is okay with abandoning it. Maybe send this command center somewhere else over here if he can hold it. I don't know. He's been able to hold this one, so that bodes well for future attempts to expand. Look at this spider mine line. This minefield is terrifying to try to engage with. Do not try that. Wow. Yeah, so Flash has survived some pretty serious onslaughts here. The only base he's lost, I don't think he cares about as much anymore. Continuing to scan, sees this base coming up, sees the cannon, says, okay, I can't quite vulture that. 
Another attempt to drop in here at this fifth base. Stormin Norman. Worker count 79 to 52. So the economy is insanely good for the Protoss, but that worker count does cut into his available army supply. And it gets to the point where if you can't mount a big enough, intimidating enough army to engage with the Terran army, when they're unseaged and moving, like attacking into this would be suicide, I think. But if you can't even hit them when they're unseaged because they have so much more stuff than you do, it's going to be a bad time. And yeah, I mean, this tank count, despite all the work Rain did, he's trying to sneak around a sneaky way, but these zealots are dead. I'm just getting some nice little storms here. Nothing incredible. That was a pretty good one, though. Three vultures down for the price of one. No, High Templar with five kills. Yes, you get saved by a Dragoon friend. Yeah, this has been a pretty amazing game one. I gotta say, I am impressed. DTs are on the way. I, 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 just, I just don't know. Spider mines attack those guys. There's turrets everywhere. You've been trying to drop the Terran the entire game. I don't know what you expect to get with DTs. Yeah, this is just Flash. Yep, setting up as he's trying to take this space for his own. Obviously, Rain wants it, but that's not going to happen. Not with this line protecting it. Or, there we go, this command center floating up here. What did I predict? I predicted it. And it happened. Dude, I think Flash might have done this. I really feel like, yeah, Rain played a great PVT. He's gonna try to go. I don't want to cast or curse this thing, but there's just no getting through this. No, Spider Mines absolutely whittling down this Zealot count to nothing. Not enough Dragoons, not enough Storm, and now it's 186 to 140 supply. Yeah, if you haven't, if you haven't won by now, there is too much economy for the Terran. This is an uphill battle of epic proportions to try to win the game from this point. Yeah, when this was secured, I think that was the beginning of the end for Rain. This whole position, too, is just impossible to get through. Over the ground, anyway. Oh, DTs get scanned. Don't kill anything. Okay. And this right side base is going to die. There's a lot of tanks heading up here. Just one shuttle with all of, like, three High Templar, and it's not going to be able to shut this thing down. Well, he's going to storm what he can. The storm is good. But, uh-uh. The combination of losing this base and the Terran taking this base. Nope. This bodes very poorly for Rain. I don't like it. He's producing like crazy. He's spending his money pretty well. He's making 14 zealots at a time. DTs are getting scanned out immediately. Like I said, I just don't know that DTs are going to get any value at this stage of the game. Uh-uh. This is not working for Rain. You can't... No... I don't think I've ever seen Flash lose a TVP when he's in this position. I don't care who it is. This Visu, this Stork, this Shuttle, this Snow. No. All right. Well, here comes a hurrah. This is the last hurrah. Kind of feels like it. He's, I mean, stutter stepping. He's storming. The Zealots are swinging in. Hang on. He may have actually won this battle. What? Rain! The combination of Zealot Bombing and Dragoon Stutter Stepping. He's actually managed to break that tank line. Not flash down to 138 supply while he's at 187. Destroy this entire base. Kill all of these SCVs. Knocking flash under 50 workers. Actually, some of them are going to escape. This reminds me of a tower defense game. <laughs> yeah. Completely murdering a lot of his economy. I... I have not seen that kind of an assault on that kind of a defensive setup in a PVT work in a long time. Dude, is Rain about to possibly do this? He's up 70 supply. 
He is gonna drop down here at this space just outside the home. Mm, more SCVs dying. 35 remain for the Terran player. Flash, economically, not as healthy as he would like to be right now. This base dead is horrible. This base with like three SCVs working at it is pretty bad too. Wow, this game won alone. May just kind of garner an epic tag and Rain coming back in. Says, sure, I'll unload here. Who needs recalls? Unload, storms more SCVs like a boss. Knocks the worker count down to 19. I thought Flash wasn't in a completely unconquerable position, but he GG's out. And Rain gets the win in game number one. Holy cannoli. What is still going on here? Why are you still in this game? He's not. He just needed a second to recover of winning. Wow. I <laughs> What a game from Rain. I'm not sure if I've ever seen him beat Flash on my channel before, but that was insane. He expanded like he needed to. He worked on killing tanks consistently throughout the game like he needed to. He went for drops like he needed to. And all of that combined together allowed him to, I guess, have enough to break this position. Uh, shut this base down. Distract Flash enough to get some beautiful storm drops at this base and force Flash to tap. Bonkers! What an absolutely bonkers display of PVT for game number one. The back and forth was nuts. That Rain was able to crack that nut. To crack that really solid, turtled-in Flash Terran nut is bananas to me. I cannot believe he pulled that off. But we know how he did it. We followed the recipe. So game one in the books. This is a best of five. We're not going anywhere. 211,000 points to 239,000 points. More for the Protoss. Outproduced. Got outproduced, actually, by Flash. That's interesting. A lot of Vultures, I guess, but outkilled Flash by a pretty solid margin. Resources here. Yeah, this is where you need to be if you're going to defeat Flash in a PvT. You got to be 20,000, 19,000 resources in about 25 minutes. That seems like a lot, but it's needed, and every bit of that money was needed. So that's a game. This is not what I expected to happen here. So game one win, Flash is on the back foot. Let's see what game two has in store for us. Game two's on Eclipse, a really fun map. And they're actually red versus blue. Top right, Flash, bottom left, it's gonna be Rain. On the jungle tile set, and this is the space platform tile set, Eclipse is split right down the middle. Unlike Third World, you can't access this side of the map here without having to be a worker. I feel like that's why this map is more popular than Third World. Because, man, so many crazy games on Third World. But Eclipse, not many crazy games. But I feel like professional players do not like to play crazy games. So that's why Eclipse has so many more games played on it. All right, all right. If you want to support Falcon Paladin, you can do so by hitting the like button or subscribing. I'm trying to get to 70,000 subscribers. It's going fairly well. You can also click the join button down below to join the channel for as little as two bucks a month at the Zergling support level, which is pretty fun stuff. I'm actually wondering, are some people like, yeah, I'd like to be a channel member for Falcon Paladin, but I hate Zerg. I don't want to be a Zergling. Should I change the name of those support levels to something that is not specific to Terran, Protoss, or Zerg, maybe? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I read every comment anyone ever leaves on the channel because I'm not big enough that I can't. Like, look. Look, look, look. If I was huge, obviously I couldn't read every comment, but I'm not that big, okay? So... Leave me a comment if you want me to read something. So, uh, that in particular for this one. But anyway. Anyway. If you, just, if you want to support the channel, feel free to using that join button. If you don't want to support the channel, don't do it. If you want to but you can't afford to, please don't. Right? Just have to fulfill those two requirements. You financially can and you would like to. Done. Anyway. Pro harassment up here, nothing crazy out of Flash. 
He is getting gas a little bit earlier, though, which implies he's going to get that factory before the expansion. Walling off down here on the low ground is Rain. Worried about maybe early Vulture harass. Maybe some kind of a Marine tank push that can be really strong against a more greedy Protoss player. But Rain scouted. He knows what's up. He's getting that Cyber Core before the expand. He doesn't want to die to a Marine tank bunker push. No siree, Bob. That is a fast factory. Way faster than the last game. But obviously you can see that with your own eyes. And yeah, back home. Really no reason to build any zealots or anything. Probe knows what's up. At least on some kind of a macro level here. Where's that SCV going? Not like he's about to die. Probe jukes back in. Sees, oh, it's a marine. Okay, never mind. Bye. You can pass that Marine. Probably could have Juke passed it. But I think to try to get up the ramp, the Marine cuts you off and then you die anyway. So pulling back makes a lot of sense there. First Dragoon of the game coming in. I almost said First Dragoon of the day, but it's not. Ooh, I don't know about expanding here. I guess this bunker implies that Flash wants to expand too. But Protoss getting the Nexus up first is nice. Rain's got to feel good about that. He got the Nexus up second in the last game, and he won anyway because he was able to make up for it by expanding a billion times. That was great. Man, that is one of the better PVTs I've seen against Flash in my days. Maybe I need to raise Rain in my estimation. Honestly, for the longest time, I kind of just considered Rain and Snow to be basically the same player. If you ask me to differentiate what makes them different from each other, I'd be like, I don't know as Vulture's speed comes in. But then Snow went on a tear this last year and has been on fire and just really hard to beat in every matchup. And I was like, okay, so Snow's the better one. <laughs> That's how I can differentiate. Snow's better than Rain. But I don't know now. If Rain's beating Flash, they're both super good, but I guess Snow is better right now. Sure, Snow's maybe more into Arbiters, potentially, than Rain is, considering Rain did not make a single Arbiter in Game 1. It was a lot of drops, though. Really a lot of success with Shuttles in a way that I haven't seen on the channel in a long time. I feel like I have cast some TVPs that way, where just Shuttle drops are incredibly good, but not for a couple years on the channel, it feels like. It feels like Arbiters are definitely the way to go. Carriers, too. You want to attack the mech from the sky, which is where they are the most vulnerable. You have some options. Armory coming in. Singularity charge on the way. Second base for the Protoss running. Second base for the Terran running. 27 to 22 workers in favor of the Protoss because he had the second base faster. And it's kind of, you know, not a hard wall, but these Dragoons are plugging it up pretty good. Against these Vultures, you check to see if there's a third base, and there's not. And that is good news. Good news for the Terran. Another gateway getting tossed up here. Obs to deal with ye old spider mines. If you don't have Dragoon range and you don't have observers against a Terran player like Flash, you're just gonna die. I know, it kind of sucks you have to do something. You're roped into doing something in every TVP, but hey. Kind of the nature of StarCraft, right? It's been figured out to a point. But there are just certain things you're gonna have to do. There's just not going to be a TVP that lasts past the five minute mark that doesn't involve spider mines. There's just not. So, having detection. And look, OBS are good for scouting anyway. It's not like all it's good for is detecting spider mines. You can send that up and park it on top of these factories and see exactly what Flash is doing, and it's gorgeous. Observer, one of the best units in the game, bar none. Perma Cloak Detector. Come on. All in one little package. Look at this guy. Pretty fast Stargate here. I'm going to try to listen for scans from Flash, although he doesn't have a commsat yet because he doesn't have an academy. If this is super fast carrier, this is a pretty good map for carrier, though. There's a lot of kind of high ground space you can hide on while harassing bases, and you can retreat to high ground spaces. Yeah, he's probably going to get a third, but I would not be shocked if we saw a fleet beacon coming in. And this is Flash, not, um... Ooh, he is building an academy. Okay, good. It's just it's just up here. It's over here. Way over here on the right side, top side of the map. Neat. 
See? Observer doing some scouting action too. This guy's got some stuff going. This one just never stopped making them. And it is a fleet beacon. A beautiful fleet beacon. Why is he building it up here? He doesn't want it to get scanned. Scan here, Flash. Scan here, Flash. Don't scan up here. This is dumb. There's nothing up here at all. Nope. Ow. Spider-Man connection. No. God. Ah. It's terribly sloppy by rain. You had an obs. Let it lead out in front of you. That is something that we see lower level Protoss players do. What is this all about? Uh, is it a fake out shuttle? Do we think there was anything in that shuttle ever? Is that... Oh, there's the scan. And he sees the fleet beacon in the double stargate. Okay, so he immediately... What's he doing? He's going to wait for these to build, and then he's going to probably queue up some goliaths at some point. Going to want those all right. Look at that, obs. I, uh, uh, siege mode. Okay. I mean, it's probably going to be hybrid carrier, right? Mass carrier fell out of fashion in like 2008, 2009. Hasn't really been seen. But carriers combined with zealots and dragoons and high temple are pretty good. Pretty hard for Terran to deal with. But this might be Flash being like, you know what? Oh, he's pulling some boys too. How about I kill you before your carrier count gets high enough that I can't kill you? At least with this particular army. I'm working on Caron boosters. Don't worry about it. If this doesn't work, I'll have a fallback plan. But this really feels like he wants to wipe out the Protoss before that carrier count gets too big. Ooh, this southern undetected path is undetected. Oh, spotted. 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 Well spotted. By rain. Sieging up. I love this. Oh, that's not an empty shuttle anymore. That's got zealots in it. Like, unload here. Do it. Watch the zealots evaporate immediately. Meanwhile, putting some pressure on your natural base. Dragoons trying to buy some time here. More zealot bombing on the tanks on high. One tank dies, but that does not seem like it's enough. This is awesome. This is a beautiful example of what to do if you detect that your Protoss opponent is going carriers. Sure, you can sit back and get extra factories and build a ton of Goliaths and Caron boost, but also you can walk right across the map with your entire army of tanks and vultures and try to kill the Protoss before that carrier account gets big enough that you need the vulture or the Goliaths. I mean, he's making Goliaths anyway. I need to keep pointing that out. This is not completely all in. But I love to just walk across the map and try to kill the guy maneuver. This, yeah, the second base dies. That's it. We're done. You can't support enough carriers. Oh, just target fire the Nexus. I don't think it really matters if these Dragoons die. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it does. Either way, okay. Rain comes in. Saves the natural. Kills every single tank. But Flash has more of those. And more where those came from. Rain does not have a third base, which I'm concerned about for him in the long run in this game. For obvious reasons, because a two base versus a two base, Protoss is not going to have a wonderful time. This is an amazing game, by the way. All right, man. Carriers. Versus Goliath. This is why Flash started making Goliaths. Because he knew there's a good chance this push doesn't necessarily work. But if I can keep Rain on two bases long enough. Oh, that's a dead carrier right here. Bam. And that's a GG. Once you stop microing your carriers, you're dead. Beautifully executed. Rain taps out and Flash. Gets that win in game number two. Oh, that was beautiful. Every Terran player is just standing and applauding right now. Someone's watching me on the bus and they just stood up and started wildly clapping. Flash. That was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. And this is what we don't get on the channel when I cast nothing but like 20 minute long games is when Terran decides just to two base, bring the tanks over, keep the Protoss just 
I want to say submissive, repressed, I guess. Keep him down on two bases, not get that third base up so he can't afford as many carriers as would make him scary and try to win now. Rather than try to go into Goliaths and chase carriers all over the place as they're hiding here and they're hiding here, right? And they're hiding over here and it's super frustrating and dumb. So instead, Flash is just like, nah, I don't want to do that. It comes down and wins. That was beautiful. Truly one of the better examples. All right, 45,000 to 49,000 points. Flash wins. He produced more units than the Protoss. Kills more than the Protoss by a 2 to 1 ratio. That's pretty good. And outspends the Protoss, too. That is, yeah, that's what happens when you harass that natural base for as long as he did. And it's an 11-minute game, too, mind you. All right, fan brigantastic game number two let's see what game three has in store we are tied one to one here could not be a more interesting spot in a best of five game three we're back on neo sylphid left side this time it's the terran it's flash right side it's our protoss i wonder if he's going to go for a reaver drop again because it didn't go very well in game number one but i guess he won anyway so i guess he doesn't care about that right Maybe forcing Flash to invest in missile turrets and so many spider mines to defend himself from Reavers kind of slowed him down on his tank count. It's a theory, anyway. A game theory. <laughs> Just, man, so good. So, so, so good. This has just been fantastic. Look, if you're not checking out RJB because you're like, who is this guy? Check him out. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. He's an awesome, very knowledgeable, incredibly passionate StarCraft fan. He loves this game. He studies this game. He develops working relationships with pro players in this game to acquire replays from them for my channel and for his channel. And I'm, I'm serious when I say this channel would be about 40% less cool if RJB didn't exist. All right, all right, good. What do we got? Are we command center first thing? That'd be nuts. Nope, throwing up a Parix. Probe on the move out. And Gateway coming up back home. So no one's going for anything crazy. No proxies so far in this best of five. No cannon rushing. I have to imagine Rain probably has too much respect and fear of Flash to try to cannon rush him. I, I cannot imagine a game wherein Flash dies to a cannon rush. I can't. Unless he greedily went for a command center first or something, right? And then gets hardcore punished by a cannon rush. But even then, I feel like he would defend it. He'd pull the perfect number of SCVs. He'd scout it. He'd kill the cannons as they were trying to come up. The Protoss would be a sad puppy. Yeah, I mean, I see that as a much more likely outcome than the cannon rush actually kills him. Be fun to see, though. Zealot on the way. First time we're going to see some significant Zealot harassment in this PVT series. We're going to Robert the Zealot move out. Robert the Zealot merch is available at falconpaladin.store. He's on a mug and he's on a t-shirt. Check him out. We'll ship anywhere on Earth except for North Korea. I think it's the one country we don't ship to. You can buy with your local currency, too. But... More than likely, you use U.S. dollars, Canadian dollars, and the Euro, which, again, we support, because we support so many currencies. All right, Robert the Zealot in the house. Arr, get some hits off on this bunker. I'm not killing these Marines. Look at that. That's the positioning, it's so good. This is why you build a supply depot next to a barracks or two barracks next to each other because Marines can slip through there, but Zealots cannot. Oh man, another Zealot showed up. Oh, Probe showed up. Probe dead. Bunker really actually super injured. This, yeah, continued Zealot pressure I think makes sense. Two Zealots are here. This is a beautiful, terrible micro challenge as a Terran player to deal with this. Because it takes like 40 hits from a Marine to kill a Zealot. But only two hits from a Zealot to kill a Marine. The bunker is here. Zealot run by. It was, uh... It's injured, but maybe not enough. 
Well, that guy's dead. He's not even trying. Oh, he tried. He tried to get out of there. Ooh, a Marine did die. Oh, that guy gets wiped. This guy is also very low HP, and he dies after getting a hit off. So, GG. I mean, not GG, but I mean, good attempt on the Zealot Harass, but Flash handled it as you would assume Flash would handle it. Steve the SCV scouting around. We have Steve the SCV merch too. Falcon Paladin dot store. Pretty easy to remember, yeah? I've seen a lot of different uh, online stores and then the dot store suffix. Is that a suffix? What's the word for that? Dot com, dot org, dot edu, dot ca, dot gb. What is that thing? What is that thing called? Can't find it. Try to Google what it was called, but it's a website suffix is as close I can come to it. Ah, oh, we did get a proxy. Proxy Starport. This is going to be dropping vultures into this base. I promise you that. Observatory on the way. Vulture thrusters are coming in next because, of course, we're doing that because we're going to drop vultures in. So, so, so good. This is going to be beautiful. I've used that word way too much in this cast. I'm going to stop saying it. This is going to be exciting. Behold. Control tower. Behold. Dropship. Next. Vultures training and building as fast as they can. I think I've asked this question before, but they're probably building the bikes in the factories. But where do the vulture bike pilots come from? Are they training them at the same time? Or are they trained somewhere else, and then they're just dumped in the factory to ride them out there? These are questions that were not asked by the designers of this game, I'm pretty sure. Ow. Ow. I'm gonna lose a vulture. I'm gonna lose another vulture. And it, no, we got speed just in time. Zippity zooming in and out of there. Third base on the way. Okay, again, I need to know about this one. Hold on a second. He's not just sending empty shuttles over here. He's sending something. That is getting wiped out, right? Like he's unloading a zealot and it's immediately dying. He's not just fake out sending shuttles over here for no reason. Well, here it is. Let's see if it picks anything up. We're too busy watching that incredible engagement between three vultures and a dragoon to catch that. But look at one zealot. No. This is the weirdest thing. I mean, I get it from a psychological perspective, right? A vulture or a, a shuttle showing up in your base on this map especially makes you panic makes lesser players panic, maybe pull their whole army back here to deal with this super fast reaver, right? But instead, we're making pull SCVs off the line, but Flash isn't going to do it until something unloads out of there. And he sees it. He's not even following this. <laughs> Good try. I mean, it's worth a shot. Now, this is a real drop. Ready, set, dropship. In the pipe. Bye, bye, five. Does a 360 and cruises right on in. Um, there's really nothing to defend against this at all in this base. Just gonna point that out. So vulture count, good. Worker count, 45 probes. We're gonna get fewer and fewer and fewer and tons of lost mining time. Spider mine up this whole area. This is just ah, this is just what you don't want to see. I got cleared out pretty quickly. I guess the zealot had to sacrifice his life to make that happen, but it worked. Still no probes mining, and all four of these vultures are still alive. Not like they've racked up a butt-ton of kills or anything. Vultures try to bust in here. No. 
try to bust in here. No, this is being covered by rain pretty effectively. But this loss of mining time, I, it doesn't seem like it's an eternity, but it might be long enough to kind of just straight up lose this game. I, I don't think we're going to necessarily see a tap out here, but... Oh my gosh, the block to keep these probes safe from these vultures has been absolutely perfect. Not a single vulture has made it into this natural base, and a lesser Protoss would have allowed that to happen for sure. We're sending probes back into the war zone, and then as soon as I say that, they get in, but they were wounded enough they didn't get any kills, so fine. It worked out in the end. Charon, really fast Charon boosters. I guess worried about... Reaver drops, right? There is a robo. Wraith is in production. Hey, as long as I have a starport, which ended up somewhere over here. Might as well build a wraith to try to deal with the potential of reaver drops, which is real. That said, production tab not really helping us with that, is it? Yeah, but turrets. Turret, 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 turret. We've turreted up this area. I like how he builds a wraith, then lifts the starport and sends it off on him. Sends the wraith off on a mission. Sends the starport off on a mission as well. I don't know. Maybe game number one had some really nice zealot bombs, and maybe some earlier Goliaths with Caron boost might have been able to shut that down a little bit easier. More quickly, quite possibly. Citadel in production. No real surprise there. Pretty much anything you want to do from this point is going to require a Citadel. And if you're planning on using Zealots at all, that requires a Citadel too. Third base, Pajoof. Lands quite nicely from Flash. Three bases for the Protoss. Not a good situation to be in long term. And the dropship doesn't even try to flee as a result gets picked off. Fourth base warping in now. Trying to keep that economic advantage, although there's not really an advantage to keep at this point. Temple archives on the way. A little bit of storm play in the future for sure. Finally, shuttle's moving out for real. And there is a Reaver in here. You can hear the sound of spider mines being planted. Yeah. Spider mine turret. You don't want to get dropped? Be like Flash. Spider mine turret the heck out of your base on this map. I mean, he can do it because he's at 61 SCVs at 11 minutes. Can you be at 61 SCVs at 11 minutes? While vulture harassing and throwing spider mines down and doing a vulture drop? Probably not. But that's what makes us different from Flash. Among other things. Dragoon's trying to push on this third base a little bit, but uh, it's good spread on these tanks. A bunker at the front, spider mines at the front door too. So Rain's like, okay, cool. I'll just expand here then. Hope that's all right with you. Scan, scan, scan the man. Are you afraid to even try to tech into carriers after that game too? Maybe that's not even something we'll see Rain try to do for the rest of this series. Could be a bit intimidated. Okay, but I mean, no real surprise here. Rain's expanding like a madman. He's protecting it against vulture attacks. Great Dragoon positioning. Four base, fifth base, and then a sixth base is easy. That's what's nice about this map is if you take the natural in one of the unspawned in locations, you got another base pretty ready to go. As long as you're protecting this one, you're protecting this one. As far as expansions are concerned, 
really only a feature of three or four player maps. Obviously, Storm's coming in. This is feeling like a bit of a repeat of game number one. Do want to point out, I haven't seen a great job done on reducing the tank count this game. And all the lost mining time inside the main base with that vulture attack is slowing rain down too. That said, he's maxed out at 13 minutes, which is kind of bonkers. Is that plus one attack? Two one upgrade for the mech as usual at this stage of the game. And uh, Rain has shown he's able to kind of get some good value in situations like this. The Zealot bombs. The Zealots on the front line. Unloading a Reaver in this mess. Getting a hit off and not actually dying. What? Usually unloading a Reaver like that means instant death. But he keeps it alive somehow. And there we go. Only had to lose a couple Dragoons in that battle. That was nuts. That's exactly what Rain needs to be doing here. How? This is crazy. How is he doing this? Sell it, unload on the tanks, maybe trying to get them to unseat. Doesn't really work, but I love this Wraith battling. Not actually attacking the shuttle at all, but attacking Dragoons, which seems dumb. Pretty good storm placements, but still got to back it out. Backing it out. Zealots will charge headlong into this battle. There's only like five vultures. Yeah, this 12 o'clock base is here. So, man, rain. Economically just killing it on all levels. 72 probes. Six bases at 14 minutes. Making 10 Dragoons at a time. And he's been doing a pretty good job whittling this tank count down over the last couple minutes here. Fourth base lands. Storm drop. SCB pull was pretty good. 58 SCBs to 72 probes is still not ideal. Yeah, that's Zealot. Good luck, guy. <laughs> oh, there's a High Templar in that shuttle. Unload. Ah, that was terrible. He should have escaped when he had the chance. There's only one turret here. I think he could have maybe unloaded here, gotten a storm off, possibly. Scanning out, catching this shuttle. But I mean, the engineering bay caught it too, right? Dragoons not wandering into siege tank range is good. Setting up another attack, but this has been so well fortified today. The Storm Vulture Tank Bunker setup is tough. Tough to crack. More scans. Trying to see is there a carrier transition in my future? No, great. Don't have to worry about that. Five gateways at a time being produced. And going to try to crack this. I don't know about that. Get some nice storm off. Really, really good storms off. All the tanks at this base are most... Yep, they're dead now. Dragoon count heavy enough to force these vultures back. SCV evac on some level. Kind of pushing them onto that refinery just out of harm's way temporarily there. 156 to 137 supply. Flash is up. But these Dragoons are willing to sacrifice their lives to kill another tank. They're showing that level of commitment to try to win the game. Excellent. Flash. Almost finished construction, though, on his fifth base. Are we killing our own stuff? That's the sound of Dragoons firing on their own thing. There we go. These Dragoons are stuck. So that gateway had to die. This is a big SCB transfer. You'll notice that the transferring SCBs are protected by these seat tanks, right? You're aware that's happening. Right side base, upper right coming in now, two from rain. I mean. <laughs> 
is an incredible macro game with some good drops and stuff too. Unloading a zealot at this new base of flashes. Shouldn't we have he stormed? I don't know if he stormed. But Flash doing a good job, just keeping little piecemeal pieces of his army at bases, just to make sure if a drop does happen, he's not, you know, completely defenseless there. So yeah, this base and this base are the only ones left. Oh, this one too. Protoss and Zerg don't generally like taking these bases against Terran because they can set up tanks down here and kill it. And it's not down, but it's protected, right? Still don't understand what this is exactly. It's walled off, I guess. Another engagement into this third base. Rain wants it, but that is a lot of tanks back there. They have 3-2 upgrades, and the Dragoons have plus one armor, which is great and everything, but just fighting the tanks, man. Fighting the power. Keeping that tank count from getting to 30, 35. That's all we're doing right now. That's the entire play. Rain down in overall supply, but has more workers. Engineering Bay dying is not a huge problem. Shuttle comes in for more storm drops, and once again, Flash is like, cool, this base is depleted. There's no gas here. The minerals aren't really worth me sticking around anymore, so I'm out. But guess what I'm doing? This is where the Terran Super Ball starts to roll. Here we go. Gonna wipe out this one o'clock position. Really, no sign of resistance at all from the Protoss. He's out of position to deal with that whatsoever. He's expanding down here. But I don't know if he can afford to just straight up lose two bases for nothing. He does have a bunch of Zealots and High Templar and Dragoons. These gateways are here for that reason, and also maybe if the main base dies, it's good to have production at this base far away. Uh, there's no way he saves. Does he save this Nexus? Hey, surprise Zealots are right. Why are you... Oh, because this base is dying too. Right. This is a good position to hold as a Terran. Oh, but the Vultures show up. Protect their tank bros. Oh, the tanks do die. Okay, well, that worked. I guess this one's still not working though. Ooh, High Templar wandering into siege tank range. Not exactly what you want to see. And this is just too much Terran. I do not think that, that Nexus is dead. I don't know if there's enough to save this one either. No, the High Templar snipes are good. Oh, that was so good. More had come out, but they don't have enough energy for a storm. Oh, they do. They do have enough energy for a storm. This is incredibly problematic. Trying to push through this center. That Flash is holding. He needs more Zealots. Where did the Zealots go? I bet he's making a round of them here. He certainly is. Is it enough to save this base? This is tough. Seven kill Siege Tank. Three kill Siege Tank. High Templar coming out of the gateways. Dying. Almost enough energy for a storm right off the bat here. But a 152 to 131 supply is not where you want to be against a Terran opponent as Terrifying as Flash as D-Matrix keeps that tank alive against the two storms. More Zealots trying to swing in here. Nah, this might just be our GG. 144 to 120 supply. Losing the space, losing the space. While taking another base. I mean, Rain's making it as hard on Flash as he can right now. But it's just going to be all for naught here. He's he's fighting. But that Nexus is dead. He's got this base down here, which is giving him a bit of hope. He's transferring some probes there. Continuing to try to trade out Dragoons for tanks where he can find it. Continuously, even as he's losing a base, trying to find enough value on these Dragoons to make sure that tank count never gets to an insurmountable number to where it's just not able to be engaged with at all. It's not engageable, if that's a word. Nexus down 12 o'clock. So Flash doing tearing things here in game three. He's gonna try to set up and wipe out this right side two o'clock base again, and should be able to pull it off. Can these spider mines get rid of this army, delay it long enough? Oh, these guys are distracted. Where are you going? 
Back this way, I Okay, fine. You can have this base, they said. Uh-uh. This is it. This is it. There's just no rain path forward here. I'm trying to use all of my casting observation abilities. My omnipotence of knowing everything that's happening in the game right now. And I'm looking at it, and I'm analyzing it, and it comes back with a Terran win. But, Rain says, you said that about game one. What if you're wrong again, muchacho? Look at this base by Flash. Oh, it's just economically 63 to 48 workers. The tank count is not insurmountable. But Rain needs to do something soon. Or he finds himself down 2-1 in a best of five against Flash. Where nobody would prefer to be if they had a choice. They'd say, would you rather be thrown into a pit of snakes? Or would you rather be two down 2-1 two, against Flash in a best of five? And a lot of people would say the snakes, man. Okay, maybe pro players. Maybe less you and me, because it doesn't matter if we're down 2-1 to Flash. We could be up. 2-0 on Flash in a best of three, and it wouldn't matter, right? Good. A little storm droppage there. Working that SCV count down to 56. Fine. I don't know what that guy's trying to do exactly. Storm this, I guess. Maybe he couldn't pull it off. But yeah, more tanks coming down this way. This base is protected by cannons. But as we know, siege tanks don't care about those. And retaking his 12 o'clock here is Rain. I gotta say, Rain is optimistic. Alright, Rain trying to make a push here, saving that one last base that would mean so much if he could hold it. Reinforcing Protoss coming in, streaming from the right side of the map here. Storms are well placed. D Matrix is up. This Terran army is going to get shut down, and this base will survive. But for how much longer can Rain hang on in this game? That was impressive. That was really hard to do, but he did manage it. And retaking this 12 o'clock is big, too. All these things have to do is wander over here, and I think they got it. Although, I don't know. Smattering of Protoss up here. These gateways are unpowered. Oh, boy. Repowering these gateways should be a priority, I think. But he's more worried about this move out and right into that mineral line. A lot of probes going down. You killed my SCVs. I shall get my revenge on you, sir. Doorman defending, not enough Dragoons. 150 to 119 supply. Its position here can threaten this Nexus and this Nexus simultaneously. Still nothing down here. Surprised by that, but this is what I was talking about earlier. It's why this base was not taken as a third or even a fourth or a fifth by rain. It's because these tanks sieging up here can kill this base. But Dragoons have range too, you know, and they do manage to save it. And they're going to save this right side base too. Rain is scratching and clawing and fighting so hard to try to win this game. He is refusing to die in a way that I'm very impressed by, but there's the GG. He loses this base. He's toast. And Flash gets the win in game three. This is so difficult. This is so difficult to manage. Man. Whew. What an absolutely fantastic display there from Flash. I mean, Rain fought really, really hard. Really, really hard, but not enough. Just not enough. And Flash is even maxed out. He's at 150 supply. He's got a bunch of tanks, but it's not the 35 giant block of death. Rain did a really good job breaking that up, breaking up the Monopoly, and making it work for him. I mean, ooh, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up on this for sure. I am, yeah, my esteem of Rain just keeps rising with every game of his that I cast here against Flash. All right, 227,000 points to 220 in favor of Flash. He outproduced and outkilled the Protoss player. Did get outspent. 
by, let's do some math here, 4, 4, 15, about 15,000 resources in 26 minutes. Not quite enough. Close. It was close, I feel like, but not quite enough. Wow. Like really, really, really good stuff there. That was fantastical. Okay. Well, let's keep this thing going. I assume we've got more amazing stuff to go because of course we do. And we'll be right back. Game number four is on Vermeer. Can rain force a game number five, or is he toast here against Flash? Bottom right, it's Flash. Bottom left, it's rain. Mm, yeah, let's keep this orange. Red versus orange seems pretty good. I do like the color combination. And yeah, this is Vermeer. You know this map. Let's check it out anyway, right? We got a lot of weird high ground places that are just kind of skinny and a good place to put tanks. And spider mines and dragoons. And yeah, it's a four player map, as you see here. Nice little bases at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Fairly easy to wall off. Same at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And other than that, just mirrored, right? Wide open space here, but I feel like that matters more to Zerg than Protoss and Terran, right? guys are having a fantastic time you're watching a great pvt best of series so i assume you are what a fantastic best of five this has been but maybe you're not doing as well as my parents are who are on a cruise today <laughs> uh, by this point i think they have, should have reached their cruise where the boat is and are ready to rock but good for them they have earned a cruise, in my estimation. They're finally empty nesters. And I think that's a good time to take a cruise. That's what I plan on doing, I suppose. But anyway, what do we got here? Oh, SCV kill! No, the repair is good! Of course the repair is good, it's Flash! Why will the repair be bad, Falcon? Think! Think, Mark, think! Yeah, look at this repair. He's like, no, you're not getting any of my SCV bros. They're helping me. They're helping me win this game. I don't want any of them to die. All right. So the Zealot stuff, I don't know that I did very well in the last game. Let's be fair. But you know, that's no reason to not keep going to it. Ah, SCV says, flee! It's a flight or fight response when a zealot shows up and hits you in the face with one of his psi blades. Just to just run away from it as fast as you can. All right, man. Zealot trying to get up this ramp. Good luck to you, sir. This is Flash we're dealing with. Ooh, gets an SCV kill. Jinxed it. Look at me jinxing it. Rawr, punch. Punch. Oh, and two SC... All right. Fine, two SCVs killed. He's trying to hide, maybe regen some of his shields, maybe try to go for a pincer movement here. He gets a Marine. I, oh my gosh, another Marine died. I just talked up how good Flash is in this situation. And immediately he loses like three SCVs and two Marines. I take it back. Rain, another Marine dies. I take it back, Rain's a monster. More, more a vulture is out. This should end the reign of terror. I mean, it will eventually. The problem is it's a slow vulture, and it doesn't exactly two-shot these guys, but it does hit them, you know, 
pretty hard because of their small size. Good grief. Okay, so we did it. We shut it down. This Dragoon is like, I can handle you guys. You're just vultures and marines. I'll fight you. Rawr. I'll kite you at least. Oh man. This is not going as well for the Dragoon as I thought it would. Oh, the micro on the vulture getting him out of there is so good. Expanding behind it is rain. Got Dragoons out, so it's not a crazy fast one. Zealots into Cybercore, into Expand was the play here. And the Zealots did so much work there. Mmm. Why is this SCV hiding up here for so long? And that's a GG. What? 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 Flash taps out. How? How about it? How about it? But about? How did that? What the? But? Okay. In fairness, at this point in the game, this very exact point in the game, there are two dragoons, and uh, no army for Flash. So he's producing a marine. He's got a tank on the way. He's trying to expand. He just, he lost too much early. Too much too early. To that, those zealots. Those zealots that work together so well to kill SCVs. And is it 23 workers to 25 on the other side? And second base is coming in from the Protoss. And... He just felt, he just read the game, decided he was too far behind, and was like, I'm out. Peace, my brother. 9,000 to 7,000 points. That was a crazy short game. That doesn't even count as cheese. That's just like normal zealot pressure. Follow with dragoons and an expansion. That's not even like qualified. 13 to 4 kill death ratio in 5 minutes is insane, though. That's really hard to overcome. I mean, got outspent a little bit, but whatever there, huh? All right, man. So Rain somehow magically did pull off ye old forcing a game five against Flash Icaramba. That's what we like to see. So game five incoming. Again, hit that like button. Game number five is here. It's ready to rock. It's on Polypoid. Bottom right, Red Protoss. Bottom left, Blue Terran. You know who this is. You are not this deep into this video without knowing the names of these players. Wow. I mean, uh, I, I, it happens, right? So Terran fans, that makes you feel better, right? You've died to that before. You've died to a Protoss casually sending Zealots across the map and killing you with them before. Have you ever told yourself, I bet that never happens to Flash. Well, if you have told yourself that, you were wrong. It has happened to Flash. And in fairness, everything has happened to Flash because he's played like 500,000 games of StarCraft in his life. Part of me wants to say that seems low, but seriously, it's a lot of games of StarCraft. So uh, everything that can happen to someone in StarCraft has happened to him, at least from a Terran perspective. Well, you know, he does play the other races really well. Remember when he did that ASL as random and it was the most amazing thing anyone's ever seen in StarCraft? There's a whole video about it. I think if you want a link to that, uh, let me know. Again, in the comments, I read any comment anyone ever makes. Say, hey, where's a link to that video of Flash going random in ASL? And I'll find it for you and we'll, I will supply with the URL. Barracks on the way from Flash. Got a gateway coming up here too. Into gas. Really makes no sense. I mean, look, we've seen Protoss try to go Nexus first against Terran, especially on four player maps like this, and just hope the Terran doesn't scout you in time to recognize what you did and kill it. This SCV is going the wrong way. So, I mean, this is a time Nexus first might have actually worked. But you never know, right? You don't know which way this SCV is going to go. Whatever Flash is feeling like at this very moment.
Yep, there's the cyber core. I mean, derp. Yeah, no gas says expand. All right, so Flash is gonna deal with the bunker pressure. It's no big deal, doesn't stress him out. I'm sure some of you Terran players are like, I hate when the Dragoons are firing on my bunker. I have to keep attention to the SCVs repairing it. I'm worried they're gonna jump in and maybe snipe the bunker. I didn't have enough SCVs repairing. I'm worried that the tank that I put over here is gonna die to the Dragoons. It's a stressful thing. I'm just gonna go factory first have the tanks ready when the vultures, well, sorry, when the dragoons show up and then not worry about it, right? Ooh, I keep thinking, there we go. Keep expecting gas. There it is. I thought this dude would do gas. He did not do gas. He did the bunker. Okay, SCV scouts. Probe ends up scouting too. All right, Zealot has arrived. He's run past the bunker. Really would like to delay construction on that command center, but there are three SCDs there ready to pick up the slack if one of them dies. So, ah, ah. This is okay. This has been better, better, better. This is better, better, better. Out of flash. He has not lost a single thing yet to this pressure. Dragoon going to try to get up here once Singularity Charge is done. Does lose. Okay. One Marine for a Zealot and a Probe is... Mwah. That's exactly what you want. I mean, yes. A perfect performance resulting in no losses for that Zealot and a Probe would be better, but... Ah. One Marine's an acceptable loss, I would say. Boom, boom, boom. Second base on the way from the Protoss. No real surprise there. This is very much a repeat of game number one. Singularity charge finishing and ready for the Great Dragoon firing upon the bunker episode. Nice. Good SCV snipe there. Always love to see that. And behold, the firing. Anyway, we really haven't seen Reavers do a lot today. This is a pretty good map for Reaver drops. Pretty wide open main. Really, the most work we saw from the Reaver in that one game on Neo Sulfid was when he dropped it in amongst that battle and I thought for sure a tank was going to snipe it and then it didn't. That's as close as we've gotten. Ah. Uh, Alright, so we know what this is. Uh, probe's transferring down to the natural base for a main arc transfer. I'm going to get an observatory. Maybe a robotic support bay. Maybe a third base. Over here would be nice. Armory coming in. And first upgrade of the day is Siege Mode this time. This might be the first time Flash went Siege in this series. He's really been favoring Spider Mine stuff, but. This is a nice little high ground siege up position that Dragoons can't really deal with. You don't have to put your tank on the low ground to deal with this, you can high ground it pretty much shut this down without any risk to your tank at all. Yeah, as soon as that hits, you're like, all right, we're out. We're out and cover just enough to make it not worth it anymore. Third base, there we go. Coming up, minerals only, high ground. Observatory is part of the wall. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, obviously you need an observatory, but it's just, it's very low HP. I mean, for a Protoss building, it's low HP. Right, it's got less HP than a pylon does. Another fast Charon boost here. This is Flash worrying about drops. Yeah, fast Goliath, but hey. You can snipe OBS with it too, so why not, right? 
There's your robotic support bay. Somewhere. I'm blind. Oh, it's all the way up here. Okay, that's a good hide. Again, hiding from scans. But as we saw, Flash... <laughs> yep. That's what I was worried about. He scans it. He sees the vacuum cleaners. He knows what he's dealing with. So, hey, I'm already got Caron boosters on the way. I'm not worried about a reaver drop. It'd be silly to worry about it. Starport coming in, whether for drops of his own or for a wraith. The value's gonna be there. Honestly, I keep thinking back to that light versus flash game, and light had just, like, by this point in the game, I think he had a fourth and a fifth. He was expanding like an absolute crazy person. And maybe that doesn't work as much in the current meta just because there's so much vulture harassment, but Luka's not making vultures. I mean, it's not, there's no way he skips vultures in this game. He says as maybe he totally is going to skip vultures in this game. What the heck? I mean, yeah, we've seen PBTs where Goliaths take the place of vultures, but usually in response to a carrier play out of the Protoss. Okay, guess what's in this? A Reaver. Guess who's getting turrets up exactly when he needs them. It's just like PV or TVZ. Right? You get the turrets up at the moment you need them. No earlier, no later. Turrets arrive exactly when they mean to. I don't know about this. Uh-uh. You're not getting through. Shuttles are too squishy for that. And again, Flash is just like... I know what you want to do. I scanned. I saw your plans. I know exactly what to do to shut it down, and I'm going to do it. Good luck, Protoss. And Rain's like, ah, shucks. Beans, if you prefer. I'll attack your front, then. Ah, Reaver on load. Bam, one hit. And he gets one hit off before he dies. That's about what I expect out of Reaver unloading in a place like this. But... Trading tanks. Trade, 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 trade. There is a vulture. We haven't skipped vultures. Spider mines are on the way. Yeah, tank focus fired and killed. Oh, just that last shot. Woo! Okay, bingo. Bingo bongo. The plays are here for the Protoss. Fourth base coming up. It can be accessed by two different directions, so you kind of have to watch out for that. Is that another tank kill? Maybe you got another tank. These Dragoons, man. Two kills, one kill. No upgrades on these dudes yet, obviously. That's fine. Plus one attack on the mech as normal at this stage of the game, too. Trying to land a third base in here on the high ground, just like his Protoss buddy did with his third base. This is not a lot of Dragoons. I don't know if this is worth... Okay. Uh, I don't know if that attack was worth anything. Didn't kill any of these tanks. Sure, some spider mines get wiped out, but those things are a renewable resource, effectively. I mean, they're not. You have to build more vultures to do that, but... Yeah, as some people would say, the spider mines are what cost the minerals, not the vulture bike, right? The spider mines are worth more to the Terran player than the vultures are. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. Vultures are still really good against Zealots and High Templar. These can get picked off because they're stationary. Maybe Vultures are better in the hands of a good player. I like the expand up here, too. So, this has been a pretty good game for Rain. Although, look at this. Fourth base coming up left side from Flash. Wow. Hmm. So, Flash feeling comfortable enough to expand up here. Again, there's a ramp... Accessing it from the north, you gotta worry about, which is why he's checking it. Scan, scan. Oh my gosh, the scan catches this drop. I don't really do anything about it, though. Ooh, Reaver unload in here. Did it die? Nope, Reaver didn't die. Some pretty fancy Reaver micro actually getting some damage here in the, for the first time it feels like in the series 
Although I might have missed a single Reaver drop on Neo Sylphid in one of those games and I would not be surprised. Because I did catch a Reaver once and it was already injured and I did not remember how it got injured. So either I saw it happen and forgot, which is possible because I have three brain cells. Coming back around for more, baby. Do not unload him. Okay. That Zealot just cleared out like six spider mines with his little fragile body. I know Zealots are tough, but when spider mines are in play, mm, less so. No way, Rain. Thinking. No, OBS! Okay. Yeah. OBS have this little tiny bit of window of grace. Where if they get into range of a missile turret, they can turn around and pull back without dying, but it brings them pretty close to death. Missile turret, good unit. Armor upgrades on the way from the Protoss. Top right base on the way from the Protoss rain. This Vulture bike pilot is spazzing out hard. And now he's fine. See? The Dragoons showed up. He had to get back to work. Storm on the way. We know rain style of PBZ. It involves shuttles and storm. Carrier sometimes. Really? Arbiters are not really in his bag, are they? I guess maybe he's just worried about them getting EMP'd on the way in. Or maybe Flash's missile turret defense are just too much, even for an Arbiter. But hallucinating Arbiters would help you solve that problem. It would be so cool. So, so, so cool. Another base warping in. I really love this. So sub 15 minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases. This is light-esque right now. And this has been Flash not really being all that active with his vultures. Is that a result of the pressure that Rain's putting on him? Or is he just trying to build up for one massive move out? Which is what a lot of Terran players like to do. It's pretty effective, but... Against Rain, I just don't know if that's the play. He's really shown that he's been able to deal with fairly large mech armies. Not the ultimate mech army of, um, you know, maxed out 37 siege tanks. <laughs> 27 vipers. And a top left 8th base. This is almost ninja. What this is. Look at this map. Look at this map. Rain has split it entirely in half. He has basically let Flash do whatever he wants with these four bases. Then he says, I'm going to take the rest of them. And let's go. I can afford to be less cost efficient than you because I have so much more money than you do. Poking, prodding, but this is just not. I'm hesitant to say this is uncrackable because I've seen some positions similar to this be cracked in the series already. Oh man, are we already just sacrificing SCVs to free up supply? We certainly are. We 100% are. EMP getting researched because Terran needs EMP. Actually, I don't know if that's true. It's good for depowering Arbiters, and it's good for taking a ton of HP off of Protoss armies, but... Definitely seen at Terran wins against Protoss without the use of the magical EMP ability. Another... Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sure, nine bases at 16 minutes. This is definitely the Flash playstyle, man. Light against Flash playstyle, to be more specific. Less... He's going. Look at this. 
Gotta trade out, man. At least buy some time for some storms to get up there. Nice. Two double High Templar snipe, snipe, snipe. Snippity snipe, snipe, snipe. Siegeing up. Firing away. Good pickup. High Templar inside shuttles are it's such a good move. We don't see it a lot. It takes a lot of extra control. And you have to worry about Goliath sniping these shuttles anyway. It's not like they're perfectly safe, right? Okay, this is the move out, though. This is tricky. Okay. Flash says, I've got my three attack. Let's come siege up two bases at once and see what we can get done. Zealot bombing, trying to whittle this tank count down to a number below 20. Okay, it's like 18 now. So we did it, it's below 20, everybody. High Templar walking into tank fire, hoping to get a storm off is not exactly a recipe for success. Yeah, look at these tanks spread out against the storm. This base is probably dead. Where's the army? Where is this maxed out army of Protoss? They're kind of cowering. This Nexus is certainly dead. Losing this might just be game over. Come on, Rain. I'm just kind of rooting for you as the underdog here, sir. Position to high ground storm from might work out. There you go. The scan wore off, so you can get a high ground storm now. That's a pretty decent clump of tanks. <laughs> Keep scanning that high ground, though. He knows the threat this is. The only saving grace for Rain right now is that he's on nine bases. Actually, eight, since he lost this one. But eight bases is pretty good. Flash continuing to push in. Storms trying to keep the terrifying best player in the world at bay here, but I just feel like there's a ticking clock in my head. Maybe I shouldn't feel that way because, look, more gateways up here. Might rebuild some tech up there. We've seen Protoss players losing their mains before and come back from the dead by having a main on the other side of the map on a map just like this, and this map in particular. Storms are good. He's just... He's Fighting, he's scratching, he's clawing. Somehow that tank's alive with 4 HP. I do not know how that happens. And the thing is, Flash is splitting his army to go after these other bases. So the army here is not massive, not insurmountable. It is big, though. It's going to be tough to dislodge. Flash knows what he's doing. He leaves just enough army here to be tough to dislodge. Shuts it down, man. I don't even know what number of this base this is, but this has been... This is getting an epic tag. What an absolutely sick best of five sent in to me by RJB. Storms, Zealot Drops, Spider Mines, amazing Vulture Micro. Good positioning by these Vultures. Oh, did not get the final two. Final two High Templar here. Yeah, and Rain, he's just he's producing. Ten Zealots, six Dragoons at a time. He's running Zealots into the Spider Mine that is his own natural base right now. Okay, kills a tank for a Dragoon. The trades, the trades, the trades, Mason. What do they mean? Rain down in supply, but this production tab is seeing. I cannot believe this series.
Okay, fine. This has just got to be so frustrating for both players. They're both giving each other massive black eyes here. They're both killing tanks. Dragoons are dying. High Templar are getting evaporated. But every time you turn around, there's more of them to deal with because they're still macroing in the midst of all this insane micro. Ah, that shuttle dies. I imagine there was a High Templar in that one at least. Nope. Desperation Archon time. Spider-Mine going to trigger? Nope. Because Archons float. Do Archons that are summoning float? What's up, dude? Welcome to the land of the living. I wonder how much Flash knows about all the bases that exist right now. He saved me. Oh my gosh, Rain. Rain is just trying to power Macro's way to victory here against Flash. Flash has expanded 6 o'clock, though, so don't count him out economically. Plus, this Nexus is 100% dead. No question about it. This army cannot save it, and there it goes. Dies way too fast to this many sea tanks. Still trying to break out of his main. I'm not even sure this is being reinforced by Flash. I think he just left enough army here to really cause a major problem. I'm trying to evac. Yeah, I think these tanks are dead. They are just cut off mostly from their support. Vultures are trying to save the day. But... Yeah, the storms combined with the... Oh, they're gone. Spider mines in amongst the dragoons. No, the tanks are gone. So, tanks died. Entire responding Protoss army died, though, and reinforcing tanks are here to take the places of their friends who died. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this is absolutely intense. Both players. APM 300. Fighting hard. Fighting strong. Got to replace his observatory because it was at his front door. Remember that? Wait, was it on this one? I think it was in this game. It's just trying to get enough zealots to bust out here. A lot of vultures, though. Scan, money, scan, money, scan, no money, scan, bunch of zealots. So what that tells him is send some more vultures over here. Get down some more spider mines. Clear those zealots out when they try to bust out. Guy just trying to poke and see what's going on because he's really in the dark right now, right? He doesn't does he have he's got an obs here they could use to kind of poke it and see what's going on, but I don't know. 187 to 190. This is it's 190 to 190 supply right now. Rain's lost bases, but he had so many he could afford to absorb those losses like a boss. Lost boss. Another base coming up from Flash. I guess while this thing is continuing on, if you want to support me in a way where the vast majority of your money goes to me instead of the platform that I'm on, Patreon's a good one. I signed up for Patreon in like 2015, so I'm grandfathered into this 3% rate where they will take 3% of your monthly pledge and the rest goes to me. So 97% of it goes to Falcon. So if you want to support me directly, the best way you can is probably going to be that for as little as $1 a month. Coming on in. Yeah, I don't know about this, Rain. You've had your positions breached pretty intensely a bunch. You have not really been able to do that to Flash in this game. He is on his game. He is ready to rock. He is prepared against all eventualities. All right, trying to come at this from two different angles, but a uh, Dragoon army into a largely siege tank army supported by spider mines. I don't know about this. The tanks got in in the top left to 160 to 130 supply, and this army is still not there, and that's your GG. Flash comes out on top in this best of five, looking absolutely insanely strong. In this game five, even against a Protoss that expanded nine times in the first 19 minutes. He still has a bank, but just so, so much pressure here from these tanks and vultures and goliaths and the scans keeping track of everything and the macro. He has 84 minerals. 
84 minerals on three base and 57 SCVs, spending like his life depends on it, and the game depends on it, and it does. Shout out to this position, man. Six kills, nine kills, 12 kills on this siege tank. It was about to die, but the game ended, so that's why he is alive still. Just killing the natural and killing the third base, and then just preventing any units from getting out on ground from the main base. Uh, just an incredible PVT. Rain won uh, one game by going macro, and the other game by Zealots. That was that five-minute game. But Flash, man. Winning all three of his games macro style. Oh. Awesome. Like, truly awesome. You clicked this for Flash. You were probably hoping for a win from Flash if you clicked on this. And you got it. You just can't be happier than that, right? Awesome. 3-2 win for Flash today in this best of five. Sick. 232,000 points to 244. Flash out producing the Protoss and out killing him by closer to a 2 to 1 ratio than he's uh, comfortable with. 31 to 7 buildings raised in favor of Flash is awesome. And yeah, the, guess what? If you have 9 bases, you're probably going to outspend Flash. And he did by 14,000 resources. 14,5 in 26 minutes. Good. But we were talking about 19,000 resources outspending in game 1, right? So 14 in this game is not really going to work out for you. Not going to work out for you, I'm afraid. All right. Well, I mean, that was, woo. That was one heck of a dead impressive best of five. Well done there, Flash. And that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Starcraft Brood War Remastered and a Flash win in a best of five, three to two. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.